All right. Fifth time on the show. Welcome back, Nikki Hiltz, the world championship silver medalist in the 1500. Now, how does that feel, I guess, to have a world medal attached to your name, I guess, for the rest of your career? This is awesome. <laughs> Oh man, that's so cool. But one of the first things Emily and I joked about on the cool down was like, we, we both basically have Pan Am medals and they always like, always the first thing they announce on the start line is like Pan Am gold medalist. And we're like, hell yeah, we can upgrade from Pan Am. <laughs> and like, um, no, it's so cool. I mean, I'm just, I like can believe it, but can't believe it. And yeah, I'm, I'm just super happy. <laughs> Wait, so uh, this is a very funny question, I guess. What has your career progression been on that starting line intro? I always find it hilarious when it's like there's an athlete there and it's been many years removed from like their college days, but it's still like two time Big East 5K champion. So for you, since <laughs> turning pro, what has it just kind of like progressed to? Because now, now it'll be world indoor silver medalist. Yeah, you you hope. I mean, some people might hold on to that Pan Am gold, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it, I, it's when I first turned pro it was like NCAA two time NCAA runner up was a big one, um, seven time All American. Like yeah, just a lot of like my college accolades. Um, and then sometimes some people will throw in like California state champ. I'm like okay, um, yeah, but but usually ever since Pan Am's in 2019, it's it's been that. Um, but actually, I mean, after this summer, it was like, you know, national champion in the 1500, and um, even even this past out like in the 2023 outdoor season, everyone brought up the indoor 1500 national champ, and then as soon as outdoor happened, is not outdoor. So I don't know. I mean, people just I I would love it if it was like something so rant like sec dmr champion you know, like throw out like random stuff like that uh which it's like it's true i am that but like um uh, i just like, think that would be great yeah third place finisher at the nca regional as a junior like get super yeah. hyper focused and specific um if i ever like we i've thrown out uh, around the idea of doing like an elite race at the pride 5k or like a elite road mile or something just because that's my event and i'm gonna do that for all the pros that do it i'm gonna pick the most like random accolade and like have to have the announcer announce that <laughs> yeah long island mile fourth place finisher whatever yeah. Might be. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay so this time around you know you win u.s indoors again how different does it feel to make a world indoor team versus a world outdoor team and now you're making a habit of making teams which is a great habit to have yeah, totally. Um, I mean, it's always special to make a team, I think, um, especially a world one. And um, yeah, there's a little bit of an asterisk to this because it's indoor, not outdoor. But uh, no, still the same. Like USA's was just, OK, just get it done. You have the standard, just be top two. And I'm just so competitive. I've, of course, I wanted to win. I want another national title. And um, but yeah, this one meant a little bit more than last year's title because there was a team on the line. And um, yeah, it's definitely a bit more aggressive of a race at nationals um I think last year I won it in like 417 and um this year is like 408 so yeah um no it's so cool and like just so fun getting that USA gear and and traveling overseas and um yeah I mean it's I hope it's always like I, I mean, when I made my first world team is 2019 and then I didn't make another one until 2023 and so I think going four years without making one every time I make one it's a big deal and I'm always going to be like this is a big deal and a huge honor because you never know how if it's ever going to happen again just because that's how competitive the U.S. is so yeah I, I was honored and, and it was super fun and um, the, it's a little different too because there's only two per event you know not three so it's kind of a smaller group out there a little bit more intimate but yeah, I, I was just stoked going on the plane over. I was I was just really excited to to get another experience at a World Champs. Now, for me, having not attended World Indoors, I was left to watch every moment of the broadcast and then like consuming all of the interviews that were coming out of the mix zone. And the first day or so when people were getting bounced in early rounds of things, even on the broadcast, like 
there was a mention of just like, oh, you know, people are training through this meet to prepare for like the outdoor season. And there were some athletes who were saying something similar to, to where it's like, oh yeah, I'm just training through world indoors. Like for you, did you have to kind of get rid of sort of that mindset and just treat this as like, no, this is a world championship. We have to treat these things like at a high level, if you really want to perform to your best ability, how did you kind of take that side of things away where it's like, oh yeah, I could be at home getting ready for outdoor season, but instead like, this is my chance to add, you know, a world title or medal to my name. Yeah. I mean, I, I treated this race like a big deal, you know, it, it's a, it's a world championship. Like, uh, and I think that the Olympics are, not that far away right like the trials are coming up so I think um I I think you're supposed to be fit right now or whatever that's just how I'm always I've always done it in North season um and then kind of afterwards taking a couple weeks down and then really get ready for the outdoor season that's just kind of always how I've done it you know ever since um NCAAs and so I think yeah it was just like of course I'm gonna do it okay cool teams on the line like I would love to go there and be fit I actually wanted to initially run the 3k at worlds um but i didn't get the standard at melrose so i was like okay 15 a days and um i actually think i would have done better in the 15 and that 3k is a little fast but um yeah i was always gonna do this and it was really cool to see like the big studs and stars in our sport like noah being there and um i mean on the distance side i think we sent our best americans like definitely a lot of you know yarid and and cole and um hobbs like yeah, just like people at the top. So, um, yeah, I was always going to, you know, treat, take this seriously and, and try to try to get a medal. And yeah, you took every round seriously in our group chat. It blew up immediately in that uh, as you just kind of sprinted in the final hundred to get the win in the semifinal or the the first of two rounds. <laughs> And it was like, well, why did you do that? And you got asked that just kind of immediately after the race. Like, you didn't want to just empty the tank in the first round, but why did sort of running hard through the line, getting the win there matter so much to you? You, just, you said afterwards, winning's a habit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was actually two reasons I did that. First was Mike and I, one of the last things we talked about before the race was like, Cause we had been watching the, you know, the eight hundreds and all these other rounds go. And he's like, Hey, none of that bullshit where you like, you think you got it. You ease up, you look around you like jog in. It's just not worth like looking cool for one second is not worth getting nipped at the line. Um, so that conversation was very fresh in my mind. And then the second reason is I, <laughs> I haven't shared this yet, but I have like a bingo card for 2024. And one of my goals or things I want to check off is I want to win 10 races and because last year I think I won nine races um and I'm counting that as a, like if I could win I'm not gonna no I gotta add it to the tally so yeah that was my third win of 2024 and, I, and I'm counting it even if it's a prelim <laughs> oh I love that that's a great goal yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then after that race you kind of recovery takes priority next day you wake up with a sore throat is that what happened so it was race day. I woke up with a sore throat. So actually I was feeling pretty good. Friday was round one, Saturday, um, off, day off. I was feeling pretty fine. I think like Saturday evening, kind of when I was eating dinner, I was like, uh oh, I kind of feel something like coming on. And what had happened was my roommate um, had gotten sick. And she, like, she basically told me um, she was sick and they were going to move rooms and everything. But um so yeah, it, it was like, I knew it was a possibility because I had been like exposed, but um, I was like, I'm going to be fine. And I felt so great in the prelim. I'm like, it's fine. Um, and then kind of, I woke up race day and I was like, oh no, I I think this is day one of a sickness. And um, yeah, so it, it was race day where I really woke up like, okay, my throat, you know, it hurts to swallow and it's like starting, my sinuses are starting to get um, a little bit clogged, like, but I don't know. I, I don't want to be like, I, by the race, I was feeling fine. Like I had slept all day and I had like, you know, taken ibuprofen and like just kind of drank tea all day long. Um, yeah. Like, I, I don't want to be like, oh, I was sick. I could have, you know, know, like, obviously I was feeling well enough to run 402. Like it was, it, it was just, uh, 
I didn't, I guess I didn't feel a hundred percent, but um, yeah. <laughs> but then mentally, how do you check yourself? So you're just like not panicking at that point that like, oh, all this hard work came all this way. And then now this thing's going to get me. Totally. I mean, that was the, that was the challenge. That was like, um, cause I did my shakeout like noon and I was like, okay, when I run, I feel fine. Like, you know, um, but it was really just, just telling myself like, this is going to happen. Like this happens all the time in sport. Like you're, you know, you have a tiny little tweak or like feeling sick. Like you're, it's so rare that you're staying on the start line, like a hundred percent firing on all cylinders. And so, um, I thought it, I kind of approached it as like, this is a really cool challenge to like, how well can I do in a race when like it isn't going my way and kind of, um, just really taking it like step by step. Like my whole focus that day was to like sleep as much as I could or drink a ton of liquids, like instead of like hyper-focusing on the race or replaying the race in my head over and over again, like it was just like, okay, let's just take this thing one step at a time. And then as far as like race strategy too, I, I talked to Mike and he obviously knew how I was feeling. And he's like, I think we just take a little bit of more of a conservative approach to this race. Um, and so it did affect like my, my race plan completely shifted because of how I was feeling, but I don't know, like it's a four minute long race. Like I'm really tough and I'm really competitive. I'm also really fit right now. So I think it was like, I think you can still do something. Like I don't, I'm just kind of the mental, like do not count yourself out because of this, like um, was kind of like what I was telling myself all day. And um, yeah, yeah, I think the race ended up being not crazy fast. So that also played into my advantage. Like I would say on that day, I think the fastest I could have ran was four two. And then put, but had I been hundred percent, maybe like, I don't know, four flat, like, um, I don't know. So yeah, it, it was just kind of moment by moment thing. And, and yeah, don't count yourself out. Yeah. They talk about Jordan's flu game. This was Nikki's sore throat race. Like that's what yeah. it's going to go down in the track and field history books as, <laughs> Mike made a yeah. one bullet comment that I thought was just so mm -hmm. fascinating. Have you ever heard anything like that from him? Like it, it explain yeah. it, I guess, like to the people, like where that one came from. The, it was, I guess, like his last minute sort of advice. Yeah, he's like, you're, I mean, I'm someone that's used, to, I, by bullet, he means like gears and yeah. like, you know, uh, at, he's like, you're used to having like three gears. Like I can go at 400 and then I can go again at 200 and then my last one's at 100. Like that's kind of what he was referencing. He's like, you know, you're used to having three bullets in the chamber, but you, I think you have one today or you might, you might get there and be like, because I'm feeling off, I just have one shot. And so he's like, just be really smart, race, racially smart. And then I, I, you know, you like, like try to get a medal and you know, that was, so that was kind of that comment, but yeah, I think, I think we talk about gears and shit. I do a ton of shifting workouts where I'll go out, like I'll do 200s all the time where it's like 16 is the first, um, you know, 16 is the first hundred and then like 14 or 13 is the next hundred. Like just shift off an already fast pace is kind of, I think what you need to practice in like this event. So then halfway through the race, everyone is still bunched up. I, I, I have the, the replay going right next to me. And <laughs> how many bullets then does Emily have? Because Emily just fires one 400 meters to go to your point, like, I guess in some of the comments you made after the race, it was like, oh, I thought she miscounted laps. I thought so too, for like a split second. She went for it. I, that was so badass. And I'm so happy that like, um, that big move, like she got rewarded for that. Cause that was just epic. Like I literally, she went and the gap that she got on us so quickly, I was like, I blew it. I was like, I I'm getting fourth and Emily's going to win worlds. Like, you know, like, and, um, but I just was like, I don't know. I just tried to close it down and stay patient and like just wait until, until 200. But yeah, that was an epic move. And I think definitely caught us all off guard um, in the best way. And like, yeah, she's just, uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty sick. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. It was like from seventh to first and then just pushing from, from the front. It was, it was epic. But even before like yeah. we got to the race, the call room, beforehand like uh, uh, I, I want to talk about the final two laps in a bit but to set the stage in the call mm -hmm. room Maya's going crazy over the 3k with George winning and then you know you get to watch <laughs> Cole and Hobbs in 
the men's 1500. Can you describe, I guess, then what that momentum and I guess sort of that, I don't know, it's not like Team USA, rah, rah, like pride that just comes over you. How, how does that like momentum feel, I guess? Like it, it was something that you talked about. It's like, okay, our turn is next. And it's like, you get to take center stage. Totally. I mean, there was just awesome races like all weekend long and like uh to see that right before you go out it was like let's go um yeah I mean I was watching Cole I thought Cole was gonna win and then it was like <laughs> came out of nowhere and um yeah no I mean it was just like the best possible thing to see right before you go out and and you have to go do your race and um <laughs> it was really cool because like we don't really ever get that like we're always followed or like the men are always after us so um yeah it was cool it was cool to sit there and watch the whole race and Hobbs like just going to the front controlling it like epic and just running with like no fear and I think that for me at least was like okay like go out go out and and yeah our turn (laughs) even the day before with like Ellie winning like does that do (laughs) something to lift like the team morale around things like oh we're we're having a great you know showing as a team at the world championships Totally, a hundred percent. That was the that was the most incredible thing I've ever seen. Like Ellie outkicked Sagai in a fast race. Like it wasn't even like it was like slow and tactical. Like she ran eight twenty and had a kick. It was like, holy shit! Like you know, this is like we, like I think it's just like sometimes we put people on pedestals of like unbeatable and untouchable. And um, yeah, she she outkicked the world record holder like it was nothing. And um, yeah, it was just awesome to see and um. Yeah, I, I was actually at the meet and I, yeah, yeah, it was just like the coolest thing I've ever witnessed. Like, and so, um, of course, you're like, it makes you believe a little bit more too. Like, damn, maybe, maybe anything's possible. And, and it is. <laughs> so then back to your race, when do you fire your, your bullet? Um, I think I ride it, ride at the bell. I think I, um, uh, that, that, next hundred was I think my fastest hundred like um <laughs> but then I think I I ended up having another one with like 50 to go uh yeah so I kind of I guess I had to all right you surprised yourself there at the end um mm-hmm. crossing the finish line you would realize you you've earned a silver medal <laughs> Emily right behind you then you decide to just immediately I guess celebrate but then right into the cameras you saw it and right in front of justin which ended up being perfect because you know him as a photographer he'll get the shot it'll be up asap but was that <laughs> something that you pre-planned beforehand i mean definitely not i think i like fell to the ground because i was so um tired and i was like yeah i think i just sat down and um yeah, and then what happened was I'm sitting there. Emily just sits next to me because we're like, "What the heck?" And then what happened was the photographers were like, "Nikki, Nikki, Nikki," and then we turned and then we like lied down. Um, and then we were just hamming up the cameras and like, yeah, it was just I don't know, it was so crazy. Like that was like, I think one of like I crossed the line and I was like, "This is the happiest I've ever been." Like, what the hell just happened? And like, um, yeah, and then to turn around and Emily's right there, it was like no way like we just like did it and like um yeah it was just such a like I don't know I don't think I'll ever forget that moment of like what did we just do and and yeah I'm I'm glad there's some wholesome pics to remember it forever (laughs) then after the race you take a moment to talk to the media there you said afterwards the United States made a statement that weekend in, in Glasgow what is the statement you think that team usa made in the middle distance that we're here to medal like we you know like we we all like work so hard and it, no one works harder than any of us it's just like you just have to do it on the day and like um yeah i think we all just like did it and it, it's so cool and, and obviously it's like indoors there's sure there's an asterisk to it. it's not the olympics or world champs but like it's it's a race when it matters it's a championship meet and like there's medals on the line and we are so competitive we're gonna run fearless we're gonna be like Hobbs Kessler's like 20 years old and he's led the whole thing and like Emily 
like it's her first world champs and she's like fuck it I'm just gonna take the lead like you know it's just like we're gonna make bold moves like we're gonna be really hard to beat and I think that that's like the momentum we're taking in the outdoors and yeah that's the same that we're making and we all want to be we're all so competitive and and want our dreams to come true and I don't know why not us <laughs> no I love that and then final question is do we feel like it inside your head as a, as an athlete at this level is it sort of like now you enjoy this moment you take your break clean slate and sort of like you're thinking toward the outdoor season or is it just keep the good times rolling and like I, I, it feels like a combination of both those things where you have to like let those results go focus on what's to come next how do you approach and reframe your mindset now for the outdoor season I think, um, yeah, take, like, take all the energy and momentum and positivity from what just happened. And like, like, I don't know. I mean, after that race, I think something switched of like, wait, maybe I can medal like at the Olympics, or maybe I like, can like, I don't know, do something really cool. And like, I think you take that and you hold it and run with it. Um, but physically, you obviously, you know, I'm, sick now so taking a week down week and then um yeah I mean I just it's crazy our sport it's like it's so just dependent on this one day and like how you do in this one race you know at the trials and then at the Olympics and things like that so I mean my mentality for this year is like I'm gonna wake up every day and like do put in my best effort and bring my best attitude to practice or whatever I'm doing and then um if I do that every single day, I'm eventually I'm going to wake up and that day is going to be that one day in June. And, you know, I'm going to do the same thing that day, like put in my absolute best effort, bring my best attitude and like, um, yeah, execute a great race. And so I think that's the goal. And like, um, yeah, I don't know. So it's a bit of both, like you said, like the, the bring the momentum. Um, and yeah, but also like, just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> I'm excited for your outdoor season. All right, let's take a couple of questions from the listeners that were submitted on Instagram. <laughs> Marissa Runs asks, will you get a tattoo to commemorate this recent epic experience? Yes, that's that's the tea. Um, Emily, basically Mark Coogan told, told Emily, and I was there to hear it, so he can't even go back on this. He said, after the prelim, he said, if you medal, I'll get the Loch Ness Monster tattooed. And I was like, I want the Loch Ness Monster tattoo. And then he's like, okay, if you medal, you'll get one too. And so then we we literally have this like packed, like me. Uh, so we we finish and we're like, okay, me, Mark uh, and Emily are getting Loch Ness Monster tattoos. And he's like going back on his word. He's like, no, 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 I said gold. And we're like, no, you didn't. And so um, yeah, Emily's actually like from, her family's from Scotland. So like, she's like, I'll get it. Like, also, I just meddled. Of course, I'll get it. And I have a million tattoos. I'm like, I don't care. What's one more? And then, so we just got to get Mark Coogan on board. And then it's, um, yeah, it's over from there. But I, I definitely, ha um, I think I'm going to get it no matter what, like a, cu a cute little, like dinosaur looking Loch Ness monster. <laughs> Yeah, I was just thinking about that. I was like, oh, does Emily have any tattoos already? Because it's like, oh, this will be the first one. I know some <laughs> people hold out for like the dream of like the Olympic rings. Or, but in that, your point, like you're like, oh, my body's a canvas. I've got legs are feeling good tattooed over my yeah, exactly. Like It can't get worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, Tiggy Loves asks, how do you combat race day anxiety? Do you have any mantras? And this is, I guess, maybe a little bit related to like Hobbs talking openly on uh, in his post-race interview about just how he was trying to keep his cool in the call room and just like battling some of those, you know, mental challenges on the day of a race. And you've, you wrote on Twitter just how like some of your races have been left in the call room as a result. So what do you do mm -hmm. to kind of mentally lock in? Um, I focus, I just really focus on like executing and I focus on like whatever my race plan is. I just, um, you know, you can get so caught up in the outcome and the expectation of like wanting to win or wanting a medal, but like you don't get those moments unless you execute. And so like I'm, whenever I get nervous or like my mind just kind of goes to like 
yeah, the outcome, I go back to like process and I'm like, okay, what's, okay, I'm going to get out hard. Okay. The, the middle lap, I'm going to float. Okay. Then, uh, you know, the third lap, that's going to be the hardest lap, but I can just like grind. And then like, I kind of just go through each lap and what, what I'm going to do. Um, yeah. With, with the race. And then that, I think focusing on doing has really helped me get less nervous, I guess. Cause it's, it, that's something that's in my control is like, okay how am I going to execute perfectly yeah Tiki Loves also asked what is their favorite race day song <laughs> um I've listened to a lot of Hannah Montana recently oh, that's I right really... yeah you made that on your yeah. Instagram story you posted about that I rediscovered the song Rockstar by Hannah Montana and that is yeah nothing gets me more hype now <laughs> perfect Emma underscore he one seven 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 asks when are you gonna update your instagram bio i need to see silver medalist asa oh my god i'll do it okay i'll do it after this interview <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see what else we got here um house of sweets asks considering how cutthroat the u.s trials can be how do you create team bonds i was curious about this because like Yes, you're like fierce competitors with these people you're going up against, but I felt like it was nothing but friendship from like you and Emily, you and Maya, like you had some pretty nice things to say about Maya after the Milrose games. And then you two are just like bumping fists, like right before the starting line. So I guess like it's all fun and games, I guess, until the trials, right? <laughs> I think it's all fun and games until the gun goes off. Like, I, I think, like, <laughs> we're we're all, like, friends, like, uh, until those four minutes, we're all just com super competitive and all want to do what we want to do. But, um, yeah, you know, I wish I wish 12 people could make the Olympic team, but it's, it is only three. And, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think there's no one else in the world other than my competitors who, like, know what I go through. Like, who know the grind, who know the, like, nerves and pressure, like, and so I think there is this like unspoken like bond and and just really shared admiration for each other. At least that's how I feel about it. And like, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I was talking to Coogan about it too. And we're just like, it's so crazy because we are like, you know, he wants to beat, he wants like his girls to beat me at the trials and I want to beat them. And it's like, but he's like, it's so hard when everyone's like just such, such a good person. <laughs> and like, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I think that's what I love about our sport. And like, it, yeah, we're all just like huge fans of each other. And like, th you, there is like, I think you see more like shit talking in things like um, sp the sprints um, than the distance because like, I, I just, I'm not to say what the, this is not because like what the sprinters do is like easy by any means. I just think we all have such a respect for how hard distance running can be. And like, you're never gonna like I will never go into a race team like I'm gonna beat you or whatever because I'm like I I'll be humbled so quick because anything can happen and it's just so hard and difficult and like I don't know I just wouldn't I just can't imagine ever doing that so um I don't know I mean I do think we need maybe a villain in the 1500 because it, it is a little bit too wholesome but um I don't know at the same time it's like I love it <laughs> I love yeah. that stuff <laughs> Well, I can think of one person who's coming back next year who could play the villain role fairly easily. But anyway, uh, for you, I guess, like, how... One thing I love about you is just sort of, like, I was scrolling through Twitter and just seeing how many likes you throw at things. And it's sort of like, yeah, you, you just mentioned that whole thing about the uh, sprinters. It's like, at the same time, you've got your popcorn out. Like you are as a fan of the sport, just like I love it. <laughs> taking in all of the drama. Oh, I love the tea. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, whenever I like, yeah, I, I wanna know like what happened at that relay camp last summer. <laughs> or like like I wanna know. I'm like, what's the tea? Like, who do we hate? Like, what's the vibes? <laughs> no, I think that's just because I'm a Gemini rising, but um <laughs> no, I just love the sport. I think I'm like just such a fan and um yeah, I'm just a, a big track nerd, just like you, Chris. <laughs> yep. All right, final question from one of the listeners. Who made their necklace, and what does it mean to them? You have the 
yeah the them necklace yeah yeah um my friend jessa hansen made it shout out um she yeah she made she made me a couple last summer and and maybe a new one for for worlds it's like rainbow instead of yeah no it, it's cute i love it i mean i'm a proud 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 non-binary person and my pronouns are they them and um it also says them and it's like i feel like to me this weekend like them stood for like every single person in the non-binary trans community like them like those people like um you know it's been a hard last month i think for for the non-binary community we lost um we lost someone named next benedict and um yeah there's a lot of bullying and harassment and hate towards the trans community um and it's it's purely because people feel empowered to other people and and when you other a group of people that's when hate crimes can happen and it's um yeah, it's a really terrible thing. And I, I want to like do the opposite of that. I want to be, you can't, you, I want to be like impossible to be other. Like I belong here. Like I am on this stage, like taking up space on the start line. The announcers are using my pronouns and it's not weird. It's normal and it's not othering. And like, um, yeah, I, and, and all my competitors like love and support me. And like, so I just, I want that for every trans person. And like, I want to show like, yeah, I guess that I belong, we all belong and we are here and like, you can't other us or dehumanize us. And so, yeah, that's, that's what I meant this weekend. And in, in Albuquerque, like, I feel like that's like, yeah, that that's just where I'm at right now with it. And um, yeah, it's, a, it's a cute necklace. I also have, um, she made, I have three now. So I think I want to give away um, some of them. I don't know how, how I'm going to do that yet, but I would love to have more people out there with these them them necklaces. No, I love that. Um, okay. All right. Last thing before I let you go is and one of the new questions I'm asking at the end of every episode is what is your Roman empire in running? Like what is the one race or workout or whatever it might be that you constantly think about just at random times, like for example, for a lot of people, it's Emily Sisson's 10K at the Olympic trials. And I think this weekend, maybe there's going to be, there's there's some Roman empires that came out of this weekend. You think about Ellie's win in the 3K often, but for you, what is your Roman empire in running? My Roman empire is the move Emily Mackay <laughs> made at 400 to go. That, that will forever be my Roman empire. That was incredible. Um, no, I mean, yeah, that's literally I've kept I keep thinking about it. Um, but no, I don't know. That's a great question. I mean, I I do also think about Emily Sisson's 10K a lot. That was pretty badass. Um oh I will say this. It it was definitely like 2017 Emma Coburn and Courtney Ferris going one two. Like that that's a good one. That moment. That is incredible. And that, you know, I felt Emma Emma DM me afterwards and I I replied I was like I felt like you and Courtney out there because it's just like it is so special to win a medal like that is so rare it never happens and to do it turn around and see a another U.S. teammate also do the same thing like oh my gosh like it's just the best feeling in the world so um yeah I would say those two in 2017 because I think that that also set the tone of like wow these two are competitors and they go head to head like Courtney has the American record but Emma is like a 10-time national champ they're each other's you know biggest rivalries and then they can just turn around and be like just celebrate together I think that that really set the tone for I'm like okay that's cool like that's I want to be that and I want to if I'm ever lucky enough to win a medal like I hope I'm just lucky enough to have a teammate do it with me and um it's crazy to think that that happened um and yeah no I I think about that race a lot (laughs) no I love that uh Nikki congratulations on the medal enjoy your break hopefully you get this sore throat cough out of the way soon so you get back into training and things but um no i appreciate you doing this thank you yeah and i'm sorry for coughing throughout the interview no, like, you're good <laughs> gonna edit those out no thanks so much chris this this is great <laughs>